Hi everyone, it's Michael. I am so excited because I just got two packages that I have been waiting for, for what feels like forever. Um, the first is for my favorite eBay seller. Um, I won a couple auctions and I just got these two Bulbophyllums in or um, Bulbophyllums. I don't know nomenclature very well, but I do know that these are really cute. Um, so the first one is a Bulbophyllum Ambrosia. I'm really excited about this guy. And then I got a uh, Bulbophyllum Fascinator. So I am, these are the first Bulbophyllums I've ever had. So I'm so eager to get them repotted and just kind of see how they do. Um, that being said, I do have their glass containers pre-drilled with their uh, holes for drainage and aeration. Um, as always, I'll link the video below about how I do that. But I also just received Kelp Max, which I'm so excited about. This is the most powerful plant growth stimulant that is available on the market. It is distributed exclusively by First Rays, which is the company from Ray Barkalow, who's basically the inventor of semi-hydroponics. I will link his site below as well. Um, but this is right in the nick of time because I hear a rumor that bulbophyllums can be uh, temperamental with their repotting. So um, hopefully this will help them acclimate quickly and successfully. So let's go in closer and um, get it started. All right, guys, so let's talk toolkit. Uh, the things that I'm gonna need are pretty standard if you watch my videos. Um, the first one is just a little bit of 70% alcohol to disinfect and sanitize my cutting tools. Um, I have my balanced plant fertilizer formula. I have my new addition to the family, the Kelp Max. Um, my Fizan for disinfecting and um, taking care of any viruses or bacteria that's coming in on the plants. Um, and that is already pre-mixed here at a ratio of two teaspoons per gallon. And um, let's go ahead and jump in. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to soak these both. And the reason you do that is to, well, these have been in transit for a while too, so they're probably thirsty, but also just to kind of loosen the, um, loosen the potting medium from it and make sure that they're not, uh, the plants aren't so dry that they're going to be brittle. It gives them a little bit more flexibility. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that really quickly. Of course, I'm gonna use tepid water when I fill these up because you don't wanna shock the plant system. All right guys, so now that these are soaking, I'm gonna leave them for about 15 minutes, and then I will come back and start to remove the um, old medium. Okay, Google, set a timer for 15 minutes. Sure, 15 minutes, and we're starting now. All right guys, 15 minutes is up, so I'm gonna go ahead and begin the process of removing the medium. So I'm gonna dump out the water, and set this to the side. I'm gonna use that a little bit later. And it's always good to just give the pot a squeeze to help loosen it. And this is completely uncharted territory to me, guys. I am so nervous because I really don't want to hurt these precious little angels of a plant. So let me just, oh, although it is just kind of falling right out. So you can see it was originally potted with some bark in the bottom for drainage. And then now it's all pretty much moss. So I'm just going to go ahead and start removing the moss. Such an interesting looking plant. see the root systems traveled pretty far down into the pot so I'm gonna try my best to not get too overzealous with removing this so it just falls kind of organically by George I think I've done it so these are very peculiar little plants and the roots are so fine and so delicate. And you can see it is just desperately clinging to this one piece of bark. Um, I do want to remove it, but I also don't want to traumatize the plant by ripping it away. So I'm going to hope that the soak in Fizan will really help address this. Um, but that's kind of what the process looks like. So I am going to go ahead and um, I'm going to toss all of this into the compost pile. I'm going to fill it up with Fizan and I will be right back. All right, so I rinsed out my bowl, and just to make sure it's extra sanitized, I'm just gonna take my Fizan solution, and I'm just gonna clear it out just in case it came in carrying any bacteria. I'm gonna swirl that around for a second, give it another dump, and then I will go ahead and submerge my Bulbophyllum into the Fizan solution. So get him set up here.
and bath time. So while this guy soaks, I'm gonna go ahead and spritz its adorable little leaves, making sure to kill any bacteria, any viruses that have come in on the plant. And while that soaks, I'm gonna go ahead and um, go through the same process with my Bulbophyllum ambrosia, and we will reconvene in just a moment. All right, guys, just like its little brother, this Bulbophyllum has had all of its old potting medium removed, and it is now soaking in a Fizan bath. So I'm gonna let these guys hang out here for about an hour. Um, again, I am really hoping that that piece of bark loosens itself from the root system on the fascinator, but I'm not quite sure, and I'm not gonna pull it off if it doesn't come off of its own will and volition. So I'm gonna set a timer for an hour, and we will come back and finish up the process. Okay, Google, set a timer for one hour. Now. All right, guys, one hour is up, and what I did to occupy my time during that hour was I pre-filled my semi-hydroponic containers with the Lekka beads. These Lekka beads are pre-washed, pre-sanitized, and pre-soaked, so they are ready for business. You can see that the way I've arranged them is in a configuration that is slightly above where the reservoir is because I don't want to drown the existing root system. Of course, if the root system develops nicely and grows into the reservoir, it'll be just fine because it will have adapted to that system, but for right now, I'm treading lightly. So I'm going to go ahead and get these moved over. Ordinarily, I would try to be diligent about exactly where I'm placing the new growth, which happens to be this guy right here, but I don't really think it matters because these are going to sprawl out and roam wherever they want. Um, to revisit this little piece, this is so gripping, this piece of bark, and as much as it triggers my OCD, I'm not going to pull it off because I really don't want to do anything to set back this plant because it's already making a pretty stressful transition from Florida to Colorado, and it's making a stressful transition from sphagnum moss and bark to semi-hydroponics. So let's just leave it be. I'm going to dig out a nice little hole for the piece of bark, then I'm just going to go ahead and fill around it. Easy enough and it's a pretty loose fit but that'll do just fine and it is now potted I'm gonna do the same thing with the other guy all right and that's just about perfect because I don't want to bury the rhizome too deep so I think I'm gonna let them hover just where they are and last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give them a quick flush of the Fizan solution all right here is the part that I have been so excited for. I finally get to use Kelp Max and see how it benefits the growth of my new orchids. So um, I'm gonna do what I usually do. Um, I will link it below, but the watering and fertilizing uh, routine for my orchids. Um, but this is just a slight amendment to it. You add the Kelp Max to your regular fertilized water. You should only be doing this about twice a month, but I'm gonna go ahead and take about, this is maybe a half teaspoon. I'm gonna go ahead and add it to the bottom of my watering can. Don't worry, I washed it clean of the Fizan solution. And then the ratio on the Kelp Max, it tells you pretty clearly what to do for orchids. Uh, let's see. So one and 250, which equates to about just under one teaspoon per liter, which equates to just over two teaspoons per gallon. I'm just gonna do two because it's a brand new thing to me and I just wanna kind of gauge it. But I'm gonna go ahead and add one and two. That stuff smells crazy. So then I'm just gonna go ahead and add my tepid water, mix it all up together, and then use it to flush the systems of the two new Bulbophyllum plants. All right, the solution is all mixed up. I will link the Grow More Orchid Food and the Kelp Max below, as I said, and now let's just get them watered. guys that's the end of that so I will keep you posted on the progress of these orchids um, if you want to know exactly how they're doing I would encourage you to tune in for my July orchid collection update I post one every single month and you can kind of check out how they're doing um, thank you as always for tuning in please if you have any questions or concerns feel free to comment them in the comment section below be sure to like and subscribe and thanks for stopping by my channel have a good one guys